So Satala 2 just came out. This update is actually a paid update. Satala 1 is free. Satala 2 is paid. They're asking $20 for it right now. This gives you standalone version, Apple Silicon support, a new layout with the 4x4 MPC style layout. It helps you find the missing samples. It follows dark mode and it comes with a couple new factory kits. So there's 16 pads, drag and drop sound management, easily rearrange kits. There's beat slicing, shape, compression, tuning, tone, volume, pan, controls on it. There's editable MIDI map, built-in file browser, preview all sounds in a folder, automatic MIDI out for Reaper, VST, audio unit, AEX, and standalone modes. So you do need to buy a license for this version. Uh, the old version is linked here. Um, you can also go to the FAQ page. Version 1 is still here. Here is Satala 2. To be honest, I wish it was re resizable. It's not yet, but this is the dark mode. So if I switch my Mac over to light mode, you see that the interface automatically follows that, as does Reaper. But I do like the dark mode. I do prefer it. So. Upon upgrading to Satala 2, your existing projects should still work. Um, the factory kits, the user kits that I've made, uh, these things all work. And if you prefer the layout of the old style, you can click here to layout and then 16 by one pads. And there you go. So that's the 707 kit uh, that I made on stream a while ago. Here's the clean 808. Apple Silicon support has been um, long awaited. I bought the update today. It's not a sponsored video. This is, I, I actually paid for it because I've been using their software for quite a while. I've probably made more than $20 from using it. We're going to start this off by adding a new plugin. So it, right click, insert virtual instrument on new track. I'm going to select Satala from the list, which is right here. Upon double clicking or hitting enter on this, it will ask if you want to build the routing for this. If you say no, you get the stereo version. If you say yes, you get a 32 out version. Uh, then we can close the effects browser. Each uh, channel is automatically routed out to these separate tracks and they're even labeled, which is super nice. So. So each of the 16 pads goes to a separate track with Satala uh, itself being on its own channel. Uh, we can take all of these, put them into a folder, and call this drums. Each pad has its own set of controls. So there's shape, which is kind of like an ADSR, but it's kind of more, it's more user-friendly essentially. So you can, so negative numbers adjust the tail and positive numbers adjust the attack. And you can see what's happening in the waveform and in the overlay, the yellow overlay. So yeah, you can shorten that sound, make it softer at the attack, which adds a lot of variety to the sounds. There's tuning control and it shows you kind of the fundamental pitch, something I really love about Satala. Um, I find I do try to like exactly match a certain number when I'm doing this because there's these lines here. But yeah, it could just help you with the tuning. So if something sounds a little off, it's at some sort of weird number. It doesn't show you like the exact number, but kind of pretty close. But yeah, I like that a lot. Panning, compression. So you can kind of, as you turn up the compression, it's showing you exactly what part of the waveform will be turned down. But the attack is always sort of going to be retained. The transient's always kind of going to still be there. So it, the drums are always punchy here. For tone, this is a really dynamic sort of EQ. As you turn this, it's not like a specific frequency. It's not a just a low cut, just a high cut. It's like a lot more dynamic. So turning the tone down a little bit is going to give you this, this mid 
scoop, but then going further, it's flatter again, and it starts taking off some of the high end. The opposite is also true. There's a little mid bump starting at like 400 hertz or so. And as you increase, it's starting to pull away more of the lows. Going further up, it starts sweeping that mid band boost all the way up to about 20K. And then further on, it starts cutting more of the lows until it's just a, a low cut at like 500 hertz. I've got all these keyboards and none of them turned on. Fail. So let's start with it all the way down at minus 100. Real subby. And uh, here's the, the mid scoop. And then here's the mid boost. And then here's sort of like at 5K. Real punchy. And then all the way up. Just the highs. So with these, these uh, four controls, shape, tuning, compression, tone, you get a ton of variety in, in shaping the tones really quickly. There's also things like trigger modes, one shot or gated, so the, the note can sustain. You can use like a bass sound or uh, sort of like a single waveform kind of thing and just sustain it. And you press the button once to start playing it and then press it again to turn it off, kind of a, a looping mode. For trigger modes, you can have a second. Um, so let's say every time you hit your snare, you want your hand clap to trigger at the same time. So you go to trigger and then set this to snare and I'm gonna hit the snare. No. When you hit the hand clap, that will also trigger the snare. I always get that backwards. I also want this to trigger the clap. And I also want to trigger the clave. That can all be done with from this menu. And then choke is usually used for symbols. So let's say I've got the closed hi-hat and the open hi-hat. Closed hi-hat, I want to choke the uh, open hi-hat. It's already set up like that, but as soon as you hit the closed hi-hat, this open hi-hat will uh, be muted. So the you might also want to choke itself. So like the kick is already set up this way. Let's set it to none. It's gonna kind of keep triggering over itself and otherwise it's just a tighter sound. That's the quick overview of how to use Satala. Let's also build a kit. I've got a free sample pack for patrons and YouTube members of the Behringer RD6. It's a great drum machine. Going back to my sample set, each drum, including the combination of closed and open hi-hat simultaneously. So A is a normal hit, B is a accented hit, C is a normal hit with distortion set to the minimum value and D is distortion with accented hits. So uh, again, looking at this, there's this accent knob and there's also the accent switch. So when I'm in play, you can make hard hits. You can control how hard that is, how much of a level boost you get on the accent. So if I do these last four, And if I turn all the way down, there's no accent. So the accent was at like 75% and um, the distortion mode was actually at the minimum value, um, which does a low cut for the kick, snare, and toms, but it also smooths the high end of the cymbals. So I really like that the cymbals sound nicer. One of the great things about sampling it is you can mix and match and you can have all the low end of the normal and accented kick drum, but you can have the softer cymbals um, with the distortion on. Try, I'll show you what this is like when you turn up the distortion amount. And I don't really like it, especially of how it makes things start to sound harsh. With the distortion off, it's such a classic sound. If you don't already have a TR-606 sample library that you love, check it out. You just need to be a, a channel member.
back to Satala. We're going to take those samples. Let's build a kit with, um, let's do the normal hit. So I'm just going to drag these in. Once we get them in, we can, um, we can rearrange them. There's only like 10 drums here. So we're going to, uh, be able to rearrange these pretty easily. We could put these in order of what they are on the drum machine. That would be one way to do it. Or we could uh, plan to do it for like finger drumming, which is a little bit different. Um, if you're doing finger drumming, you might want to have kick on the middle and even have two of the same. And then you have hi-hats and then you have snares on the sides. But if you're just programming it, you probably want to do something like this, where you've got your hi-hats and then maybe Uh, let's put the clap there. Toms. Something like that. Yeah, so let's try programming something in. So um, one of the great things about using Satala is it automatically gets the names of those notes in your um, MIDI editor. So we can just hit this drum mode button, and then there's all the, uh, all the samples. You snare on two and four. Yeah, something like that. Do a symbol at the top. Bring the clap in to follow the snare on the second time. Is the audio going through the feed? It sounds like it's just the mic. Good question. Um, the drum machine was not. I should have looked at the chat earlier. I'm hearing it through the speakers, but you guys aren't. So now that we have this, this thing set up, we can start tweaking it or retuning it. So let's say we want our hi-hats to be higher pitched. Okay, so this one we want to choke uh, CHOH, and we also want to choke the open hat. And this one, we want to choke opposites. Um, and then this one should probably choke the open hat and the uh, semi-open. The hardware doesn't have pitch controls. It doesn't have like individual volume controls necessarily. They're, they're, the toms are on one knob, the clap and the cymbal are on one knob. There's a switch to choose uh, what you're seeing for when you're programming it. And the all the hi-hats are through this volume knob. It does have individual outs for these. The two hats, the clap has its own out, the cymbal has its own out, the two toms are there. And running out of these skips or bypasses the distortion. You can actually make a pretty complicated setup with that. But yeah, going back to the plugin, yeah, we've got things like tuning and tone shaping and stuff. I can easily switch these over to the B mode. Now these will be all accented. Can I, sh I can't shift click, I can't select multiples, unfortunately, but so let's do, let's kind of do the ultimate sort of thing. We'll do all accented kick and snare, and then the hi-hats will be um, distortion, but unaccented. The toms will be accented with a uh, distortion.
basically what I'll do here is is reset this and then save this as a new kit. And then I will include this kit um, for anyone that has Satala 2 um, and has the, the, the drum kit. Save kit as. I'll put this into Dropbox. RD6 Satala. How do you save the note names as a template for drum VSTs? Good question. Okay, so Satala actually outputs the drum, the note map automatically somehow. Actually don't know how it does it. Um, but yeah, it, it does it. And if we switch this, I don't know at what point it, it refreshes. Yeah, when, we're, when we reload the, the thing, it refreshes. Well, actually, let's start from the beginning. So let's say we're like this. We want to rename something. We can double right click and we can individually, uh, individually name something. Double right click, it's very weird. That's how you do it. Once you have something in here, right click up in this area or, or from the file menu, file, note names, and then you can save that to a file. I've got a few of them saved here already. And then file, note names, load. Uh, right there, and there's some uh, there's some recently used ones here. But otherwise, it just goes to the right folder, MIDI note names folder in Reaper's config uh, folder. I've got one just for like chromatic notes. So it's just every note name in there. Uh, clear note names. Yeah, it came back. Okay. Um, if you want to do that for a template, you need to put in like a track template. You have to put in the MIDI note, uh, a pattern, add the template. And then I think you also need to have this option, one MIDI editor per track. I think this needs to be enabled for that to work. Once you have the note name map in there, you can use the action, show hide note rows, unused and unnamed. And then for drums, you want to be on triangles or diamonds. But I've got a shortcut on my toolbar. Go from piano mode or default settings over to drum mode, where it sets it to diamonds, hides unnamed and un unused note rows. That's it. Those are the two modes I mostly use.